Here we enjoy the clean air on the loveliest village in the plains. But what if every place was not like this? How exactly did places like this come about? Apple just updated its website to unveil the new iPad. Voila! Take a look. The official announcement is happening right now in New York. Tech expert Katie Lindendahl is here to walk us through what is going on. Katie Lindendahl. The fact that some people you can still use device 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 if you want to get the 3G version. The uh, with the Galaxy tablet right now, you can only get the 3G version. If you want that discounted price, $399, you have to sign up for a two-year plan. Yeah. Yeah. It's much different than the current Galaxy S4, but this upgraded model has the latest versions. Mm -hmm. And they have sold 170 million iPads to date. With enrollment around 25,000, Auburn University students contribute more than they think to the growing issue of electronic waste. If every student owns a computer, tablet, and smartphone, that's 75,000 items of communication technology in Auburn University alone. What happens to these 75,000 items of communication technology when we're done? Before we get to the e-waste problem at hand, we must first find out what makes these modern conveniences so toxic. Gold, platinum, aluminum, copper, and silver are all raw materials that can be found in the iPhone. There's more gold in a pound of electronics than in a pound of gold ore. Rare earth minerals such as yttrium, lanthanum, praseodymium, and neodymium are used in making different components within our electronics. When inhaled, several of these minerals are known to cause lung cancer. Miners are often diagnosed with silicosis, silico tuberculosis, asthma, and nasal cavity erosions from working in the mines to extract these minerals. Airborne dust created from a high concentration of alpha quartz silica has caused different lung diseases. Tin, tantalum, and tungsten are violently fought over in the Democratic Republic of the Congo because of their demand in electronics. 5.4 million people in the Congo have died since 1998 because of war fueled by these conflict minerals. The conflict over these minerals does not stop after their extraction. Electronics recycling is largely done in primitive ways, which is hugely devastating for the local environment. Much of the toxic pollution comes from burning circuit boards, plastic and copper wires or washing them with hydrochloric acid to recover valuable metals like copper and steel. In doing so, workshops contaminate workers and the environment with toxic heavy metals like lead, beryllium, and cadmium, while also releasing hydrocarbon ashes into the air, water, and soil. In Gaiyu, China, an illegal electronic shipping shop, workers are paid $8 per day. Gaiyu has the highest levels of cancer-causing dioxins in the world. Seven out of ten kids in this region have too much lead in their blood. Many of the devices broken down in the town come from other countries, including the U.S. The United States disposes of 100 million cell phones annually, and in 2008 disposed of 130,000 computers daily. You may now be thinking, what can Auburn students do to help? Once a semester, the East Alabama Recycling Partnership offers a free event for electronics recycling. Computers, monitors, televisions, copiers, computer components, and more can be recycled responsibly. Since 2009, event participants have recycled nearly 83 tons of electronic waste. The Auburn City Recycling Drop-Off, located off of North Donahue Drive, accepts batteries, cell phones, and ink cartridges for recycling. By utilizing these options and recycling their communication technologies, Auburn University students can help reduce the growing amount of electronic waste.